Ooh, that's unfortunate. All right, so today is Monday, October 26th. Um, Halloween is this Saturday. Not that we're going trick-or-treating or anything with COVID, but I've had an idea and I'm going to need to knit like the wind this week to make it happen in time for Halloween. So let's see if I can knit a baby sweater in five days. All right, so um, my current knitting that I'm supposed to be, well, or that I've assigned myself to try and do this week was supposed to be finishing um, clue number two. Well, there was a bonus clue, so really it's clue number three, but finishing this section here on the mystery knit along, uh, Stephen West um, slip extravaganza. I'm already behind um, because the rows are just crazy long, and quite honestly, I've been doing a lot of sewing this week, last week, this month, uh, for my kids, Alex and Dom's Halloween costumes. And I have a store-bought pumpkin costume, not really costume, it's a pumpkin onesie, a store-bought pumpkin onesie that I've already taken some pictures of Marshall in before winter came to Alberta. Um, I'll put those pictures in right here. And I'll put a picture of our current Christmas time Halloween situation that we have going on. Anyway, so I had him covered um, with a, if I can't think of anything and don't have time to make it, store-bought uh, pumpkin onesie. But that was before I saw this picture of baby David. So I've got it in my head that I absolutely need to knit Marshall a, um, a David Rose costume, a David Rose sweater basically, um, from Schitt's Creek, if uh, you guys are at all familiar with that show. And you should be. Um, if you haven't watched it, stop now, go to Netflix, watch the whole thing. Um, but yeah, so I've got it in my head that I need to knit a baby rose, baby David rose, Schitt's Creek sweater for Marshall, our um, almost three month old, for Halloween. Because I think that for that costume, I really just need to put the sweater on him and maybe put some mascara in his eyebrows. Which I don't know if that's totally appropriate to put mascara in a baby's eyebrows. But it's gonna be a good look for him, I think. Anyways, so in order to get that done, in five days, I've got um, my copy of the Strange Brew pattern. This is Tin Can Knits. Um, it's actually a 38 page book on how you can knit a yoke sweater top down, bottom up, um, with some pattern samples of their own, with ideas for charting your own, with the pattern written out for Aaron DK weight, fingering weight, I think they've got it in like four different yarn weights so that you don't even really need to gauge swatch because I'm going to knit bottom up. I'm going to start with a sleeve and a sleeve is a swatch and this is for a baby so I'm just going to aim for bigger than I think that he is. And Marshall's 14 pounds already so he's a big boy. Anyways, strange brew pattern. You can tell I've got like good energy for this video, um, for this idea. We'll see when I check in with you tomorrow how plausible it is and whether or not this energy has crashed into a what have I set myself up for. Anyways, strange brew pattern. I've got tons of black, um, this was from a failed dyeing experiment where I wanted to have almost all the way to black but it's still brown yarn and I couldn't get to it really. Uh, I could get really dark brown or I could get all the way black and I couldn't find myself into that almost all the way to black, but it's still brown yarn. So I've got tons of this. This is um, a worsted weight, 100% merino that runs somewhere very close to Cascade 220 as far as um, gauge. I've got a gray skein of Cascade 220 and I've got a white Knit Picks Wool of the Andes um, and this is basically exactly the same yarn almost as Cascade. 220. And I'm either going to do a imitation of this sweater with the lightning bolts or this sweater here with the stars uh, around the yoke. But since we're going bottom up, I don't have to worry about charting the yoke or making a decision on that quite yet. Um, in fact, it'll be a decision that's driven by the number of stitches that I have around when I join in my sleeves to the body. Um, and then 
I just want to direct you over to this Instagram account, and I can't remember the name right now, but I will put it right here, because um, this gentleman knit a spectacular adult size David Rose sweater um, this fall, and that's also part of the inspiration for this project right now, so check that out. Anyways, um, I'm going to wind up some black yarn and cast on with Wild Abandon, and we'll see if I can't work this out in a week. I'll check in with you tomorrow with my progress. All right, checking in again. It's Thursday afternoon now. Um, I'm channeling my mom life realness. Um, and Marshall's actually taking a little nap um, in his baby wrap where he usually takes his naps most days. Um, it's amazing how much stronger your back and shoulders get um, having a little 14 pound baby boy growing on the outside of you. We're going for a hard fourth trimester here. Anyways, rambling. Um, it's Thursday afternoon. I've got like a day and a half of time left to finish in time for Halloween on Saturday. And I've got the body um, just about maybe like three rows short of the joining in the sleeves. And I've got a pair of sleeves which means it's time to start planning out what I'm going to do with the yoke. Um, I'm really keen to do the black, white, and gray uh, with the stars around the yoke. For me, it's a little bit more iconically David than the lightning bolts are. Um, and I'll put pictures right here of the two options. Um, but basically, I'm going to sit down with my... Um, Oh my gosh, can't think of the name of the pattern now. What's the name of the pattern? What's the name of the pattern? But basically, I'm going to sit down with my pattern um, and make myself a little wedge-shaped diagram uh, that would incorporate the yoke decreases. And I don't think that the stars would fit on one wedge, but I can put two or three wedges beside each other and get a star repeat that would fit um, across two or three wedges and then repeat that around um, with the decreases for the yoke. I think the actual sweater and this reproduction here, the stars aren't the same all the way around. The repeat might be like a three or four star repeat, but for this little guy it's probably just going to be a one star repeat. It'll be the same star each time. Uh, as opposed to like changing the orientation of the stars as you move around the yoke uh, in the name of ease and not having to chart out the entire yoke. But again, that's going to come down to how I can put something resembling that yoke sweater onto the wedge decreases um, for his uh, for his yoke. Anyways, this straightforward little update. Um, I finished my first 50 gram skein of the black yarn and I'm maybe 20% into the second one, but still have plenty of yarn left. Shouldn't be a problem. Um, I didn't gauge swatch because sleeves are a gauge, but also I didn't even measure my gauge. Um, I just cast on with a 3.5 millimeter needle. It's recommended in the pattern for DK weight yarn and knit a 2x2 two two cuff for eight rounds, needled up to a four millimeter needle um, for the rest of the knitting. Uh, I'm following the 6 to 12 month size. Marshall is 3 months old, but he's currently wearing 3 to 6 month size clothing. So I figured 6 to 12 month would be the safer size. I'm knitting a DK weight pattern with worsted weight yarn, although on the recommended DK needles. And let's be honest, Cascade 220, it plays that line between worsted and DK anyways. Um, but it should be plenty big enough. I've put the sleeves onto his little arms and they come right up to the underarm and they're not like the most positive ease, but there is some positive ease, so the sleeves will be fine. And just holding the body of the sweater against his little body will be more than fine here um, for the body of the sweater. So yeah, so I'll probably do another like four rounds of the stockinette. Um, before getting started on the yoke. Sorry, I must have just fell off the needles there. And uh, design the yoke and check back in with you once I've got a little bit of color work on here and the sleeves join in. And then we'll be flying. 
Um, I also have it in my head that I might be able to piece together a bit of a Moira costume for myself when we go out. Uh, we're planning on doing a little walk through the main street of our town here. Um, there's Uptown Olds does like a Halloween howl, socially distance, outside on Main Street in daytime. So um, not going full on trick or treating this year because of the COVID. Um, yeah, so got this to finish before Saturday. Um, progress on my other two boys Halloween costumes. Dom wants to be a builder or a fixer. So I've been sewing a set of overalls for him. They just need to be hemmed and they need buttons sewn on. Alex wants to be a prince or a knight and I don't have most of that costume with me but I basically made him a little black tunic, um, hand stitched quilted it uh, with some leftover gold, uh, fool's gold sock yarn by Hedgehog Fibers, uh, leftover pink and, pro pink and blue fabric for a cape and then, because why not put way too much detail into a four-year-old's Halloween costume, uh, I hand-stitched a pair of these um, lions that are going to be sort of the, I don't know, lapels, the, they're going to hold the cape onto the tunic. So this is just hand-embroidered, um, you know, an appropriate amount of detail for a four-year-old's Halloween costume. So... That's what I've got to do between now and Friday. Anyways, I will check in again later tonight, maybe? The next day. All right, it's Friday morning. Um, I've really got to stop promising the next update in the evening, because at the end of the day, I just want to go to bed um, before spending the night breastfeeding Marshall on and off every two hours, because he's a hungry, hungry hippo. Anyways, Friday morning. Um, made a lot of progress yesterday. So I went ahead and charted out the yoke design. Um, you can see that here. And I am going to put the final yoke design pattern up in the blog post for this project over on uh, yarnlab.ca. So anyways, my final yoke design wedge, um, using my imagination for what colors are going in what sections. And I could have just done this star repeating all the way around like I said I was going to, but I am a glutton for punishment, so instead I picked four different stars and I've been knitting from this chart for that sec center section and just moving from star to star. Um, each one of these is 10 stitches, which is, um, yeah, each one of these is 10 stitches by nine stitches. So there's 14 of them around. So if I had stuck with this wedge here, I would have had 10, 14 stitch sections, but instead I want to have less white space in between them. And so I got 14, 10, 10 stitch sections with these stars. Um, in the actual original sweater, those stars are black with white around them, but for space, I've just been putting them in in black. And then depending on time and motivation, I'm going to go ahead and do a back stitch with white yarn around the stars afterwards. But you can see that the yoke is coming together really nicely. Um, I've got just about finished the second to last, there's my beginning round marker, just about finished the second to last round of the star pattern. On the last round, I'm going to have to do a round of decreases as well um, to move up in the yoke. And one thing that I wanted to show you, with the exception of this round here, which was a three colors colorwork round, I am locking my floats down every um, other stitch. So I have no floats that are longer than two stitches anywhere, again, except for this one round where I've got three stitch floats, but locking floats and working three color colorwork didn't seem like more effort than it was worth. Um, I'm a real big fan of locking all of my floats down. I think that it gives a better tension on your fabric. You have to be a little bit less careful about tensioning your floats nicely because by locking them down each time, you're not likely to get tight floats. Um, sorry, my hair is a bit greasy this morning. It's bothering me. Anyways, so by locking them down, you're less likely to get tension problems with your floats, in my experience. Plus also, for little fingers, um, there's no floats to get little fingers caught through. 
um, when I knit these sweaters here for my boys, I did not lock the three stitch floats down. Um, and I wish that I had, because every time they put their hands down their sleeves, they catch little fingers in those three stitch floats. So I think common convention is people lock things down that are like more than five. Um, my personal convention is that I always lock anything bigger than three down, um, maybe four in fingering weight, but anything heavier gauge than fingering weight, um, I'll lock down bigger than three stitches in a float. But I think I'm kind of moving to preferring to lock down every other stitch, so I don't have any floats longer than two stitches. So yeah, it just makes, you know, a smoother, um, more pebbled fabric on the inside and nothing to get caught on. Um, yeah, anyways, we're coming. So really, I should be done this yoke by this afternoon. And then like I said, depending on my motivation, um, and I think that it would make the stars pop more, I might take some white yarn and backstitch around each of these stars, just like an embroidery backstitch. Um, yeah, so coming along. I will check in with you maybe tonight, otherwise with a finished sweater tomorrow morning. All right, so I just cast off and I did a knit two together through the back loop um, cast off because I like it comes out real clean. It is stretchier than other cast off, but it's not particularly stretchy, but it looks cleaner than some of the stretchier casts off. Um, and there's no scenario where this neck hole is going to stretch enough to go comfortably over Marshall's head. What I should have done would have been to knit the neckband back and forth so that it was open here and then you could tack it with a button. Um, but he didn't do that. And I don't care right now to rip it out and redo it. Although, realistically, five rows of, um, knit two pearl shoe ribbing wouldn't take that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steak it. Now this is super wash wool, so it's not great for steaking. I also haven't put any steak stitches in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine, machine zigzag with some black yarn on either side of where I'm going to steak. Um, that's going to prevent any unraveling. And then I will snip and I'll show you that. Okay, so I've done that now. Um, you can't see the stitching with the black thread on the outside, but I used a red bobbin thread, and you can see I've really just zigzagged the crap out of that um, on both sides. So that gives me an extra like two inches in opening the neck, so hopefully that should go over his head. Um, and then I might do like a snap or a hook and eye or something like that, or a little button um, after the fact to close that. So here is Marshall's fully finished sweater. Um, the whole thing weighs 133 grams of that. Uh, basically 100 grams exactly is the black. I played yarn chicken right to the end and had only one meter of black yarn to spare. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results. I have not blocked it yet, so the color work's still a bit lumpy. Also, you'll see that the um, color work is sitting at a great... Um, the color work is sitting at a bigger gauge um, than the uh, than the solid stockinette, which you know is oftentimes the case that you have a little bit um, fewer stitches per inch, indicating that the stitches are a bit larger in the color work than in the stockinette. But also, the stockinette is a superwash um, knit picks gloss. And the colorwork yoke is primarily a Cascade 220 superwash. This one here is a merino. The Cascade 220 superwash is just wool. And I do think that the gray yarn is a little bit uh, of a heavier grist, a little bit of a plumper yarn um, than the black used for the body. Um, but, you know, uh, good blocking and it looked fine on him for Halloween, so... It's all good. So full disclosure, I showed you guys how I had cut through the neckline, um, machine sewed and reinforced my steaks. Uh, it turns out I did have to cut all the way down through two rounds of decreases or increase um, decreases in the yoke. Marshall's head is quite large. 
And then what I did was I picked up along this edge, knit a little um, button tab. So I'll, um, I'll show you how that looks. So here it is open, um, and this gives me another like two inches almost in open neck diameter to get it over Marshall's head. Um, so after I, um, you can't see it anymore because it's all covered up, but again, I machine stitched down two lines of stitching uh, in order to reinforce it. And then I went ahead and cut the steek. Um, then I just inserted my needle through the fabric along here to pick up 10 stitches and knit a little garter, garter button tab with two yarn over buttonholes on this side. Sewed a pair of buttons on that side. And then I just used what was left of the end from weaving in my ends to sort of whip, um, whip stitch and wrap around and tidy up the edge a little bit. So it's all neat and tidy and finished, finished, finished. Um, so now I guess all that's left is to show it to you on Marshall, who turned three months old today. All right, are you ready for it? You ready to say hi? Here's baby Marshall in his baby David sweater. Say hi guys, say hi. Can you look over here? What's this? What's this? Whoa. Whoa. And he's looking super cozy in his sweater. And you can see he's got his little button up neck opening back here. And he's toasty warm and looking around at everything. Yeah. So we're really happy about how this sweater project turned out and Marshall's really happy to make his formal debut here on my YouTube channel. Aren't you buddy? <gasps> yes, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? And I'm going to pop in a couple pictures of Marshall on Halloween. I'll toss in one of the boys, Alex and Dom, um, wearing their Halloween costumes as well. And um... I'll see you with my next project. Anyways, thanks for following along with my uh, Schitt's Creek David Rose Baby David inspired um, color look sweater. Yes. Yes, he's trying to run away on my lap. Marshall's ready to be moving already even though he's only three months old. <laughs> Alright, bye for now guys. Can you say bye-bye? Bye. Bye. Yes.